Cutting aluminum with a CNC router. Welcome to episode 7 of CNC Router Beginner to Pro. Can't believe that we are already that far in. Now, aluminum is kind of like the holy grail for the CNC router. It is not all that difficult to do once you know the details. So let's get right into it. So let me say, machining aluminum, we do need to get a bit more specific. Yeah, this one right here is a sheet metal, actually. It comes from a home center. And this is a 1000 series aluminum. So in aluminum, we go from 1000 to 8000 series in different categories. And they all have different properties. One might be very good uh, for bending, for forming. And another one could be welded, uh, while another one is a really good structural aluminum. So the 1000 series that you see here, this is a holder for a sensor, cannot be machined. It is pure aluminum, it's very ductile, it smears really bad. You can drill a hole in it with a drill bit and you can cut it with a bandsaw or something like that, but you cannot use it on the CNC machine. So don't get that and think you can machine it, it won't work. The next one that I like to um, get to is 6061 T6 aluminum. So 6061 is a 6000 series and it's, it has normally a dash T6 behind it. Uh, and that is the temper of the material. So material gets a little bit harder. You know, it's, it's easier to machine. Really soft materials don't machine well. And T6 aluminum is uh, heat treated. So also aluminum can be hardened. It's a different method and it works different than on steel, but aluminum can also be heat treated. So the T6 material is a heat treated material. So 6061 heat treated material is what you want to get. I have worked with 6061, the 2000 series, which is an aircraft grade, and also 7075 material, and that is also an aircraft grade aluminum, and all of those machine decently. The next that I like to show you is that there are two types when it comes to the manufacturing of the material. And this one here you find under aluminum bar stock, even though it looks like a plate. This is considered aluminum bar stock, it's a quarter inch thick and it falls under the classification of route aluminum. Route with a W in the beginning. So these lines are from the manufacturing process and route material is, um, has some sort of forming basically to make it into this shape. And then the next category of material is a cast plate. This is what, oh, this by the way, I wanna show you also, this is one inch thick. This is also uh, extruded, so route material, extruded material, so it is formed. And then this here is cast plate material, and the cast plate has a little bit different surface as you can see. This is uh, one inch thick. And the advantage of cast plate is that it is free of stress. Um, it also is usually way higher um, um, alloyed, so it has way higher uh, amount of other metals in it uh, to give it its certain properties. So there's also a plate that is called a die and tool plate and or fixed chain tool plate. Um, it has already a finished surface. Uh, it's nice and flat and you can use that for your projects as well. Now I use this cast material to make the fixture plate that uh, I showed you when I built my vise. And also the aluminum table that I have on my machine is used um, or uses this material. Growing my YouTube channel will only work if you are going to leave me a like. So if you find value, please leave me a like. Thank you. So chip welding is one of the major concerns when you machine aluminum because it's so ductile um, like I described before. And one of the really, really good additions you can make to your equipment is a fog buster or some sort of, we call it also minimum quantity lubrication system. I guess that's translated from the German word, but here we often say fog buster. Now this here is an advancement on the original fog buster that I made. Uh, it has a lock line right here, a holding block where air goes in and then the lubricant goes in the front and it mixes it right here. This unit runs on a peristaltic pump to deliver the fluid. If you like to build one of these, I have a, a video about that, but also a complete plan with drawings and a, a list actually, a bill of material that you can download for free on my webpage. You can also buy this on my webpage. 
I think I still have two of those in stock. I will not make any more after that. Um, sometimes I just make more than I need. Anyways, um, so this would be a super awesome addition to your machine uh, if you are planning on cutting aluminum more frequently. Now, if you are cutting aluminum every now and then and you don't have this here, what you can do is use an air blast. So if you have a compressor, hook up an airline and maybe with a nozzle or so, um, you can reduce the amount of air. We don't need, you know, 100 PSI or 80 PSI. You can lower that down to just 20 PSI if you have a nozzle like this. And then blow out the chips, blow it out, out of the trench that the cutter is making, the bit is making, or blow it out from the area that you're machining. This will prevent that the bit will re-chew the individual chips that often can um, produce an overload situation on the flute where the chips get evacuated and ultimately it starts to smear and that creates friction and heat and now you have a chip weld right in the flute or on the cutting edge of the bit. So that will normally ruin a project, it will break your tool. Sometimes it gets really loud and you can stop it before it breaks but most of the time it will break your tool. Okay, I just talked about lubrication and cooling. So you can use a cooling liquid and um, now up front I like to say that I see some videos and makers use a spray bottle of uh, or can of WD-40. I have nothing against the WD-40 solution but spraying it in a squirt usually in my opinion or experience doesn't work very well. Especially if you are making a deep pocket and you're going in in a spiral. If you are putting a squirt of WD-40 right in there the chips won't come out. Um, because all of the chips now it's so wet down in there that the chips will cling on the sidewall of the bore and that usually um, means that you have to rechew all of that and that can again lead to chip weld and a broken bit. Now the materials that I use um, when I started out actually machining I used this one here from metal cutting fluid it's called Trimsol. And the Trimsol product um, is okay it's not really for a uh, a coolant droplet dispenser or mister. Um, it's not really a mister. That's not actually what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is not mist the material so it doesn't get airborne or aerosol. So um, it is really not made for that but I used it in the beginning. It's a water-based material. It works well. I had no problems other than this actually stained uh, my machine quite a bit. So I then changed over to this one right here. This is the Trim Microsol. It's a bit of more stable product. Actually, it doesn't go bad in the solution when you make it. And it's a Trim Microsol 585XT. I think I got this from MSC um, online, I believe. If I find it on Amazon, I will put a link down, but MSC is probably where I got it. The advantage of this one is um, that it doesn't stain anything. It's uh, rather soapy, so it provides good lubricity. Um, I have used this for a while, probably for a year or so, and had good success with that. No chip welds. However, let me put this down. Um, as of a year or longer, I thought several times now if I tell you this or not, but as of, as of a year or longer, this is my favorite. It's just uh, rubbing alcohol, 91%. So let me just say that up front. Rubbing alcohol is great uh, because the chips up uh, dry out. So when you vacuum them off, they just are easily vacuumed off your machine. The other solution here, the chips would be wet and because they're full with water and that doesn't dry. Um, so these vacuum off the table really well and they also blow out of holes and out of trenches that you cut really, really well. However, alcohol, uh, you know, can there be an explosive mixture in the air? Think about that. And then also breathing this, is there a health hazard to your health? So don't copy what I do. Just because I do this doesn't mean that it's good for you and for your environment and for your practice. Please do your own research. For me, it works. I can tell you that um, if I use, one moment, if I use this tool right here that uh, you see also there on my machine and I touch this block right here or the nozzle, it is ice cold because of the evaporation of the alcohol. 
and the tool stays cold and the aluminum stays cold as well. So one more time, do your own research if this is something that you want to use as well. So especially if you have really thick material, it is worthwhile to take your project actually, the project size, and cut it out of a plate a little bit bigger. So instead of um, using the router, the, the bit itself, to cut your project out, just um, cut it out of the plate beforehand. Give yourself two millimeter room for error and then you just have to make a cleanup cut on the outside. And that is so much easier than cutting something out of a plate that is an inch thick. Um, chip evacuation with these become a really real headache and uh, chip weld is uh, very easily done. If you pre-cut it out, that will not happen. Now, how do I cut this? Or something that is sick, I either use my bandsaw or I use my miter saw, it's a wood cutting miter saw. And that saw has a blade on it, especially for uh, cutting aluminum. It's made by Oshlund. I have a video about that in my playlist. Um, you can go ahead and find that. I can tell you that I have that blade for two years. I'm really happy with it and I would buy that again today. So I try to keep the videos now around the 10 minute mark and we are there. And that means that I'm gonna split it right here and in the next video I will machine this part and show you how I did that. And then I'll also show you all of the tools uh, that I use frequently for machining aluminum and most importantly, the speeds and feeds that I have. Okay, I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Take care, bye.